Finally, Torn introduced us to the Shadow. So, you're the new recruits who keep getting into trouble. Oh, no, not you! Welcome to our humble underground movement. I am known as the Shadow, but you may call me Samos. And you are? Jeez, Jack, we went through all that to meet His Holiness, Old Log in the Head, Grandpa Green? Don't you know who we are? Sorry, kid. Never seen you before. And I never forget a face. Especially one that ugly. So it begins. How is this possible? We came through the rift with you. I into the future, right? Yeah! You used to look older than dirt and uglier than a knotted stump. What gives? Did you get a little nip and tuck while we were gone? Listen, boys, I don't know what kind of twigs you've been chewing on, but I don't have time for this. We've got a baron to overthrow, a child heir to protect, an invasion of metalheads to stop, and a city to save. I'd say the schedule's pretty full. And boy, was it ever! We got this gear like candy from a baby. <laughs> And this big lens, something's cooking. Mmm, kind of smells like... Burned apple? Ah! Here I am testing it. <laughs> and standard in every adventure game, yes, the always present key. Whoa, got it. Where would you be without me, eh, Dax? Well, Jack, I probably wouldn't be two feet tall, fuzzy, and running around in a sewer without a pair of pants. God, I miss pants. We did it all for this kid! Everyone thought he was so special. Wearing some royal seal or something. Anyway, with my help, we got the kid to Mars Temple. You did it, Jack. You actually found Mars' tomb. Great. Now what? We send this poor kid into a meat grinder? This is the day I've long awaited to finally hold the fabled precursor stone in my hands. You must be cautious, child. The tests of manhood are sure to be fraught with peril, and Mars Air must face them alone. It's okay, kid. You can do it. It's just a deep pitch black sure to be filled with the brim with painful death, old tomb. I wouldn't go in there. Something, Jack. Jack, remember the sure to be filled to the brim with painful death part? Faced with certain death, I bravely led Jack into the temple to face the tests. Welcome, young warrior. Today you have proven yourself worthy to receive Ma's legacy. He's talking about me! Thanks, your holy statuness. What you are about to receive contains grave power. Eons ago, the Precursors waged a terrible war with the Horaquan, those dark creatures you refer to as Metalheads. Driven by their dark leader, the Metalhead Legions destroyed our great civilization, and now they swarm the universe unopposed, looking for the last relics of our power. Ma tried to hide the Precursor Stone in this tomb to protect it from them. It is our last hope, and you were chosen to keep that hope alive. I think you've got me confused with someone else. I just want the stone. It is time to fulfill your destiny. Behold. Wow! Let's get the goods. Boom! You brought me right to the stone. Your pitiful underground friends were no match for my guards above. Now I will gain the power I need to crush my enemies. And after claiming the stone, I'll begin with you. Abomination. The Precursor Stone was not meant for you. Stone to 
its full potential. Soon all who oppose me will be destroyed by its power. Let me go on record here. I had nothing to do with this fiasco. Not only did Jack lose the precursor stone, but all of our friends were thrown into prison as well. I can't be without my entourage. Hey there, sweetheart! The metal head masher has saved the day. Oh, and I let Jack tag along too. Oh, my little hero. Seamus, are you ah. right? What took you so long? I added six rings to my trunk, waiting for you two to get me out of here! Great Yakow horns! What happened to you, Jack? Wait a minute! You're you! I mean, the other you! I mean, you know what I mean. Yes, it appears I have an older time twin. Great grass grubs! I can't believe what a cranky old log I become! Two Samos the Sages! Ah, Jack! They're multiplying! We need to find the kid pronto! What are you talking about, old growth? The kid already opened the tomb. Our top priority should be to disrupt the Baron's forces. Oh, look who thinks they've sprouted. If you were half as wise as I am, you'd know that the proper course of action is to find the kid. Listen, you old dried up leaf. I run this outfit, and I say we go after the Baron's forces. Do we have to separate you two? Finn's activating the warp gate. We need to get out of here now. Rumor was, some reclusive mechanic chick at the stadium had the 411 on the Baron. But since she was unable to see my handsome mug from behind her curtain, she was giving us some lip. You must be Crew's new errand boys. Don't you have someone to collect money from or beat up or something? Let me handle this, Jack. Listen, lady. Now there's just two things you need to know. Wait, that voice. One, we don't want to join your stinking race team. And two, you just lost a date with Orange Lightning. Let's go, Jack. Daxter, it is you! Mira! Oh, I never thought I'd be so glad to see your furry mug. And Jack, you look different. It's been a tough ride. The Baron pumped our boy here full of dark eco, and it did something to him. Now he's got super moves or something. And a few anger issues as well. I've been looking for you guys forever. And planning a way to get us back home. I need to get to the Baron. You could try to win the Class 1 Racing Championship. The winner of that big race always gets to meet the Baron in the palace. To win that race, we had to beat Errol. Oh, Mr. Grumpy Pants. I want more than just to win, Eco Freak. I want you! Greetings, racers! Today, your nerve and skill will be tested for our amusement. If any of you should by some small chance beat our grand champion, Harold, then you will be awarded a month's supply of Eco! And a short tour of my palace to see how the other half live. Good luck, and die bravely. Ready, get set! Amazing racer that I am, well, you know how it is. Thank you! Thank you very much! Mwah! I love my public! A brave man of the people. And who is this worthy opponent? Surprise. What? Just a little closer. We need to talk. Fool! Don't you get it? It's over, Jack! All the heroes died long ago. Only survival remains. By whatever means, this city is mine. These lives are mine. This war is mine. And in war, people die. Kill it. Watch out! I win, Jack. After them! So we made our escape. But there was one last bit of business we had to attend to with our old employer. 
As usual, we found crew up to no good. You'd be loving this, mate, wouldn't you? Have you witnessed anything like this? Anybody can report this behaviour. Hey guys, can I get a hand for a sec? I thought you lesbians were supposed to be as good as us, like. No matter how subtle... Hey princess, where's your tiara today? They are all forms of sexually based harassment. If you know someone's prejudices have got out of hand or have become inappropriate, do something about it. Gaming Lunch returns in the comments. Play some PlayStation All-Stars, Little Big Planet, and more every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If there are other activities planned in the comments, Gaming Lunch will be cancelled that day. The UK election that was supposed to be so unpredictable wasn't in the end. The voters decided David Cameron can keep the job of Prime Minister, this time with a majority, but a wafer-thin one. Within hours, three other party leaders in the UK had fallen on their swords, including Ed Miliband, the Labour leader, because their parties did so badly. The biggest surprise winner last night was the Scottish National Party. It won more seats than anyone imagined. Our Stuart Greer was up late into the night watching it all. Stuart? Well, Donna, it was a stunning result that no one here expected. Going into the vote, all the polls predicted a hung parliament. But today, David Cameron's three main rivals resigned, and he holds a narrow majority in parliament. After a visit to the Queen, a victorious David Cameron left Buckingham Palace, making the short drive back to 10 Downing Street. It will be his home for another five years as Britain's Prime Minister, but this time he has a mandate to govern with a Conservative majority. I truly believe we're on the brink of something special in our country. We can make Britain a place where a good life is in reach for everyone who is willing to work and do the right thing. The results were a political disaster for Cameron's opponents. His former coalition partner, the Lib Dems, were virtually wiped out. And Labour leader Ed Miliband resigned following his party's worst electoral defeat in almost 30 years. Britain needs a Labour party that can rebuild after this defeat so we can have a government that stands up for working people again. And now it's time for someone else to take forward the leadership of this party. Labour suffered devastating losses to the separatist Scottish Nationalist Party, the SNP, which swept almost every seat in Scotland. Among those making history, 20-year-old Mahari Black, who becomes the youngest British MP since 1667. The SNP's spectacular gains represents a seismic shift in British politics, much like the Bloc Québécois impact in Canada during the 1990s, and it could set Scotland on course for another independence vote. It's historic. You know, the political firmament, the tectonic plates of Scottish politics have shifted tonight. The Conservatives were barely affected by a challenge on the right from the anti-immigration UK Independence Party. But to appease right-wing Tories, David Cameron now has to follow through on a promise to get a better deal for Britain in the European Union and hold a referendum by 2017 on whether the UK should stay in the EU. He's got a small majority, a rebellious party, and he now has to conduct that negotiation with EU partners, bring something home that can satisfy his party and put it to a referendum. It's going to be two very fractious years. 
This country may now have a majority government, but the UK still faces much political uncertainty ahead. Will it try to leave the European Union, and will Scotland once again try to separate from Britain? Donna. Okay, lots to come. Stuart Greer, thank you. What are you doing staring at the screen? Click here to watch another gag. No, don't listen to him. He's pranking you. Click here to see another gag. Oh, sure. Billy the Pretty Girl. See what dad gets you. Trust me, you want to click here. Well, believe who you want. But if you can decide, at least click the subscribe button just right there. You know, MP for once, I actually agree with you. Oh, yeah. Go on. Click the subscribe button. TNA wrestling special with these wrestlers and knockouts gonna be battling out for bragging rights and a whole lot of cash twenty thousand dollars well let's meet our two families first of all it is the wrestlers big Mick Foley man thank you Steve yeah man we've been out here a lot of time I feel like I know y'all man <laughs> So you're like, big. you're like, you should be here. You're part of our family now. Hey, I am. I am a huge fan of the sport. I really, really am. Introduce everybody, man, so we can get it on. 25 years young. He's Jay Lethal, Rob Van Dam, Mr. Anderson, Anderson, and the blueprint, Matt Morgan. Yeah. yeah. Win yourself some money. Let's go meet the knockouts. <laughs> Hey, Lacey, how you doing? Good. This has been wonderful for me. <laughs> Yay! So y'all been having fun? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so much fun. Let's meet everybody. Oh, uh, I'm Lacey Von Eric. This is a mysterious pair of... The fiery redhead, Christy Hammy, the beautiful velvet sky, and the spicy Angelina Love. Let's play. Give me Lacey Von Eric. Give me Mick Foley. Let's go. Guys, here we go. We got the top six answers are on the board. Name a place a husband better not be when his wife's in the hospital giving birth. Lacey. Another woman's house. Another woman's house. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A pub or bar. Pub or bar. Wow. Let's go, pass or play. Yeah, You're going to yeah, play yeah. it. Okay, we got answers. 
Jay Lethal. Come on, man. Name a place a husband better not be when his wife's in hospital giving birth. How about home? <laughs> better not be sitting at the house. Yeah. RVD, uh, the man. Is the strip club different? Yep, that is different. <laughs> strip club. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Give me a place a husband better not be when his wife's in the hospital giving birth. A sporting event. A sporting event. The game. Wow. That Morgan. Man, this is, this is me. This is exactly how I look <laughs> when I first step out the shower. <laughs> you know, when you get out the shower, you're wet. You always look best when you're wet. When I'm wet, that's me. <laughs> hey, name a place a husband better not be when his wife's in the hospital giving birth. With, out with his friends. Out with his friends. Uh, that was a good one. Nick, there's only one answer left. If it's there, you clear the board. He can't be in the waiting room. Cannot be in the waiting room. Gutless. Uh, oh, God. Uh, Count, ladies. Let him jump. You got two strikes. If it's there, you clear the board. If not, then knockouts get ready to steal. Name a place a husband better not be when his wife's in the he hospital. He better game. not be at work. Yes. Oh, yeah. He better not be at work. You'd be loving this, mate, wouldn't you? Have you witnessed anything like this? Anybody can report this behaviour. Hey guys, can I get a hand for a sec? I thought you lesbians were supposed to be as good as us, like. No matter how subtle... Hey princess, where's your tiara today? They are all forms of sexually based harassment. If you know someone's prejudices have got out of hand or have become inappropriate, do something about it. Gaming Lunch returns in the comments. Play some PlayStation All-Stars, Little Big Planet, and more every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If there are other activities planned in the comments, Gaming Lunch will be cancelled that day. You're doing the all-female cast of Ghostbusters, yes. which is fantastic. I'm Isn't that so great? Yes. Kate, Leslie, Melissa, it, yeah, we're shooting this summer. It's gonna we haven't be, started yet. I'm, I'm so excited. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Do you believe in ghosts? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. No, I do. Yeah. It doesn't sound like you do. No, but <laughs> I mean, there's different kinds, I guess. Well, sure. I mean, there are different kinds. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, 
Because you did that, I get those. Okay. That was terrifying. Oh my god. We have to go. Oh my god. It was so hilarious. It was so good. I guess. Well, sure. I mean, there were different kinds. <laughs> Oh my God! That was really scary. Oh, uh, Look yeah. at my hands. I knew you would be scared. He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. Now. Did you make like a breakaway thing just yeah, for the app? Just for you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We see it in movies and TV shows all the time, birds delivering messages. Whether it's a historical drama or the ravens in Game of Thrones, one has to wonder, can birds actually deliver messages with accuracy? Not to burst your fantasy bubble, but ravens, while incredibly intelligent, aren't the likeliest of birds to get this job done. Sorry, Jon Snow. But the somewhat surprising fact is that other birds, such as pigeons, are fantastic at it, hence the name carrier pigeon. In fact, they were successfully used nearly 3,000 years ago to declare the winner of the Olympics abroad. Pigeons have an innate homing ability, meaning they'll return to their nest to mate. Flights as long as 1,800 kilometers have been recorded. Because of this, they've been used for centuries to send messages, but, and this is a pretty big but, they generally only sent messages in one direction. They'd be taken away from their homes and when needed, could send messages back home because their natural instinct was to fly there. So the idea of sending a bird wherever you need it to go is a little far-fetched. However, by placing their food at one location and their home in another, pigeons have been trained to fly back and forth between two locations reliably. They have great eyesight and use the sun and the stars, landscapes, odors, sound waves, and potentially even the Earth's magnetic field to locate home. Not to mention, they seem to have an internal compass which orients them. And because of their migratory behavior, they can be trained as flocks as opposed to other birds which would require one-on-one -on -one attention to accomplish the task. Special thanks to Audible.com for supporting this episode and giving you a free audiobook of your choice at audible.com slash ASAP. Audible is the leading provider of audiobooks with over 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature. We recommend the book How We Got to Now by Stephen Johnson, which covers six innovations that made the modern world. You can download this audiobook or another of your choice for free at audible.com slash ASAP. Special thanks to Audible for making these videos possible. And subscribe for more weekly science videos. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. I like ice cream a whole lot. It tastes good when days are hot. On a cone or in a dish, this would be my only wish. Vanilla, chocolate, rocky road, even with pie a la mode. But we scream louder for some flavors more than others. No! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 ice cream flavors. If you put that ice cream in your mouth, you're going to be in big trouble, young man. D you uh, uh. <laughs> For this list, we're looking at the best, the tastiest, and the most popular ice cream flavors out there. We are excluding brand-named flavors like Rolo, however, and are focusing on more general, traditional tastes. You don't like ice cream? It's too cold! <laughs> Number 10. Coffee. Want some? Sure. We start with sophistication, as everyone's favorite wake-me-up remedy is chilled to perfection and presented in a cone. New haagen Gelato. Even the name tastes good. Coffee is a flavor in general confectionery that can divide the consumer, but it deserves its spot in today's top 10 all the same. Want me to bring anything from home? My cars. Your cars. What about ice cream? Coffee. Coffee. Ice cream can often be presented as a kid's treat, or as a treat for grown-up kids at least. But this flavor carries with it a touch of class that demands attention within more adult circles. You want some coffee liqueur on your ice cream? Ah, here's the alcohol and drug peer pressure mother warned me about. <laughs> I was starting to think it was never going to happen. <laughs> yes, please. Number 9. Rocky Road. Rocky Road! Rocky Road! Rocky Road! Oh, yeah. Martin! Martin, you can't... <gasps> From sophistication to squelchy silliness, Rocky Road is one of the most popular alternative ice cream flavors out there, delighting millions with its messiness. I'm locked inside the Vitelli's basement with this guy. <laughs> Rocky Road? 
The traditional combo of chocolate, nuts, and marshmallow is the simplest of sensations that seems to work wonderfully every time we try it. Rocky Road is great. It's a very delicious and complicated flavor. A flavor that flourished in 1930s America thanks to ice cream mogul William Dreyer. It was given its fun name in the hopes that it would give people something to smile about amid the Great Depression. Rocky Road for the little man. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. We grinned then, and we're still grinning now. I love Rocky Road. I want to go and buy half a gallon, baby. Number eight, pistachio. This isn't just your ordinary ice cream cone. It's pistachio. Another inherently stylish sort of ice cream. It seems an odd occurrence that the pistachio nut should ever have been tested as a flavor at all. But aren't we glad it was? Is this pistachio? Uh, yeah, that's pistachio. Here's your spoon. <laughs> Which is that? Hot fudge. Pour it on top. <laughs> Its distinctive green coloring meant that pistachio was often included as a flavor within the traditional Neapolitan ice cream setup, so as to more closely resemble the Italian flag. Crack, 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 crack. Pistachio! But even by its lonesome, this ice cream option is as good as it gets. You'd be nuts not to think so. Hey, what you got here in the tree? How about that pistachio ice cream? Number seven, strawberry. Strawberry. I must act. Sometimes going back to basics is the best thing to do. And that is certainly the case with strawberry ice cream. Now let's forget our troubles with a big bowl of strawberry ice cream. A flavor that was reportedly served during the inauguration of America's fourth president, James Madison, it dates back at least as far as 1813. With so many synthetic things around these days, it's nice to know there's at least one ice cream this simple, this good. There aren't too many things that remain popular for over 200 years, but those things that do must be well worth it. And strawberry ice cream is exactly that. It's an iconic taste of summer, whether in a scoop, a bar, a pie, or as part of the trio known as Neapolitan. I got your ice cream. What is this? Strawberry ice cream. It has strawberries in it. I don't even know how to respond to that. I wanted plain strawberry ice cream without chunks of strawberries in it. This has chunks. I see one. I can't eat this. Take it away. Would you like me to get you something else? No, just forget it. Number six, mint chocolate chip. All right, you guys. I'm going to go and enjoy the rest of this magical leprechaun-looking ice cream, and I hope that you get to go and do the same. Our next flavor is outside of the box, but not outside of the box enough to be scary. Mint chocolate chip is the ice cream of choice for those that fancy a break from their norm. It's sweet, it's refreshing, it's everything ice cream should be. Mm. Heavenly. Often made with a simple peppermint or spearmint flavoring, the product is occasionally produced using the liqueur creme de menthe. Alcoholic or not, there's an edge to this ice cream that'll have you going back for seconds. Her Mint chocolate birthday. chip. Would be good. How about some red chocolate chip? Number five, chocolate chip cookie dough. Come on, come on, go away! Because we've all been little kids, most of us have baked cookies or something similar, and nearly all of us have eaten the doughy goodness before it's been put in the oven to set. Blend that flavor into vanilla ice cream, and you have yourself the tastiest of treats. Hey, anyone thinking chocolate chip cookie dough in a waffle cone? An invention largely attributed to the world-famous Ben & Jerry's brand in the mid-1980s. Its glory is in its gooiness. We thought the chunk should be, well, really chunky. Anyone who says they don't like cookie dough is either lying or very, very strange. You've got to save me from myself. It's intoxicating. Ooh, cookie dough. Number four, chocolate chip. Mm. It's a classic, and it's a classic for a reason. The cocoa bean forms the foundations for a very vast majority of confectionery products, and ice cream is not about to buck the trend. In this instance, the chocolate flavor is found in extra bits of the good stuff in chip form, poking out of a usually vanilla product. Chocolate and vanilla swirl. Of course, for the more daring diners among us, double chocolate chip places the pieces in amongst a chocolatey base ice cream. You really can never have too much of a good thing. 
you remember to bring the chocolate chip ice cream home? Yes, I did remember to bring the chocolate chip ice cream home. Number three, vanilla. What's up with the vanilla face? The cornerstone of everything ice cream, the world would be a much bleaker place without vanilla flavor. Sure, it's simple, but that's because it doesn't need to fancify itself. As close to ice cream in its original form as you're gonna get, it complements just about every other dessert known to man. Since we're up, do you think we should have some pie? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> think we should have some vanilla ice cream on it? I, that's my favorite. But also satisfies as a solo dish. Should you care to mix things up a mite, then the extra creamy flavors of French vanilla could be for you. Either way, this flavor rules. So much so that even Thomas Jefferson concocted his own recipe back in the 1780s. He's jealous, cause I'm out getting mine. Shade with the gauge and vanilla with the nine. Number two, cookies and cream. Woohoo! Absolutely gorgeous. When buying ice cream, your sweet tooth is already awash with anticipation. Ice cream with cookies in it and your taste buds are bouncing. Well, oh, did you? Now here's a great big scoop. Oreo cookies and cream. It's true. We live in a world where that amount of joy can be scooped into a bowl or perched atop a cone. With many inventors claiming this creation as their own, beginning in the late 1970s, cookies and cream was a top five finisher in 1983 as one of the fave flavors. And voila! Perfect Oreo ice cream. Yummo! A flavor widely associated with the Oreo brand in particular. It's a 10 out of 10 in texture and taste. But it's been just frozen out of top spot today. You eat the cookie! Nom 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 nom! Before we serve up a scoop or two of our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. A well, dazs takes these raisins and soaks them in rum for 42 days and then shoves them into ice cream. Yes, imagine delicious honey-colored butterscotch ice cream and crunchy pecan nuts mixed together to make Borden's rich, creamy butterscotch pecan ice cream. Hoot, Mom! Number one, chocolate. Who wants chocolate ice cream? Me, 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 me! Where would we be without chocolate? Chocolate rain! And without chocolate ice cream in particular. The USA's second most common flavor behind vanilla, and one of the earliest known ice cream options ever invented, conceived even before vanilla, it dominates the frozen dessert aisle of most supermarkets, and with good reason. I love chocolate ice cream so much that... I ate all of my chocolate ice cream. With its earliest versions published in Italy during the late 1600s, but gaining popularity in the U.S. in the late 1800s, chocolate ice cream has been around for a very long time. And it'll be around for a long time more. Briar's ice cream. It's like tasting chocolate for the first time. Versatile as they come, it's great on its own, or as the base of other top 10 tastes like Rocky Road. Now, best go out and buy your favorite flavor. Enjoy. So, oh, Marge, we need some more vanilla chocolate and strawberry ice cream. Do you agree with our list? No! Which flavor did we forget? I had some ice cream. I had some ice cream. For more tasty top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Mm.
Gaming Lunch returns in the comments. Play some PlayStation All-Stars, Little Big Planet, and more every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If there are other activities planned in the comments, Gaming Lunch will be cancelled that day. When most of us fall... Interpreter. Oh, good lord. Oh, We're embarrassed. We try to laugh it off. But when it comes to Shaquille O'Neal's on-set sprawl... Get him, kid! Oh! <laughs> what's especially rewarding is the reward Shaq is offering to those who make fun of his fall. Whoever makes the best meme of me busting my wins $500 cash. Down goes Shaq! Down goes Shaq! And up went the tweets. Shaq knocked down by Floyd Mayweather and Muhammad Ali. Shaq sprinting and swimming, playing Twister in a ball pit. Shaq himself was picking favorites, saying, this guy is winning so far. A guy who added a Kevin Hart joke to the clip of Shaq's fall. Shaq, when you fall during the games, it's the funniest I've ever seen in my life. This is how you fall from us. Hey, no, oh, God, please. Huh. This isn't the first time that Shaq has taken a spill on set. <laughs> set up. Oh, man, hey, oh! <laughs> <laughs> but this time, it seemed genuine. Though, who knows, with his 7 foot 1 inch frame, that? some joked about the impact of his fall. Get him, kid! Oh! Shaq was shown dancing with John Travolta, joining Michael Jackson in Smooth Criminal, but our favorite so far was called Lilliputian Takedown. It took Robin Montoni about 35 minutes to do, and it was her first ever tweet. Why Lilliputians? He's so big and they're so little, you know, opposites tracked. Half of those Lilliputians could fit in one of Shaq's size 23 shoes. Ginimo, CNN. <laughs> New York. You sure, man?